Deep in the vaults of NASA, hidden from prying eyes, lie photographs that could shatter your perception of reality. Images so disturbing, so mind-bending, they were classified, suppressed. But tonight, we're breaking the lock. Tonight, we're diving into the forbidden files. Are we alone in the universe? Or are we being watched by unseen forces? These photos might hold the answers. But be warned, what you're about to see will challenge everything you thought you knew. Are you ready to go beyond the veil? To confront the truth, no matter how unsettling? Do you believe NASA is hiding something from us? Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still in the program. And we have a ghost in Cepheus. This looks like a ghost in the ether for sure. It's actually a rather mysterious dusty curtain featuring a very faint reflection of Nebula VDB 152. The reddish tinge you see is ultraviolet light from a star causing a rusty looking luminescence in the nebula dust. Described as a cosmic phantom, this picture was released by NASA on Halloween in 2012 and titled A Ghost in Cepheus. This intergalactic ghost is 1400 light years away, so arguably a safe enough distance for us to deal with. Who knows how fast this ethereal dust can travel though? Also, who knows what this dust is like up close? I don't trust it. Dust it. Coming in at number 9, we have telescope ghouls. Whoa, 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 look up at the top of the James Webb Space Telescope. Do you see what I see? Are these the ghosts of dead astronauts or technicians? Or maybe they're alien apparitions? This photo by NASA's Chris Gunn is incredible, and he has aptly titled it Ghosts and Mirrors for obvious reasons. So it turns out that the picture taken in the Goddard Space Flight Center's spacecraft system development and integration facility clean room is taken with a super long exposure, all the while ultraviolet lights were being shone over the telescope to look for contamination. Now the result is this spooky picture. Sounds like a reasonable explanation, right? Some may say too reasonable, joking, but this telescope may well capture some spooky images of its very own in the future. It's the successor to Hubble, and it's off to explore the universe in March 2021. Any Lord of the Rings fans out there, stand up. How much does this exosolar planet look like the Eye of Sauron at number 8? Like, creepily so. Did J.R.R. Tolkien know about the formal hut when he wrote The Lord of the Rings in 1937? If he didn't, perhaps he foreshadowed it. Get a load of this picture. This is Formal Hout B in orbit around Formal Hout. The exoplanet is also known as Dagon. It's an extrasolar object and it orbits a star that gives it its name. How far away is this terrifying eye formation? Only 25 light years. The 2012 images from the Hubble Space Telescope are terrifying. The name Dagon in mythology is a Jewish deity that represents a half man, half fish. Just a side note there for you. Number seven, Jupiter's clouds. We've all seen and heard of Jupiter's big red spot. That's just a nightmare in itself. So big, always going, no idea why. Can't even think about it. But when NASA's Juno spacecraft passed the Goliath back in 2017, it captured something almost just as interesting, if not more, dare I say. Jupiter's clouds. It feels like you can just put your arm out and touch the silky space sky. It's beautiful, but that's about 20,000 kilometers away. It's also quite scary. This big ball of hydrogen is quite mysterious below these clouds. So far, NASA has found lightning higher up than they ever thought it could go. They've also found constant storms at both the North and South Pole and winds so powerful that the planet's magnetic fields are literally being moved around. That's how strong the wind is. Your skin would just blow off. You'd be a skeleton just standing there. Beautiful, mysterious, and deadly. We love space on MA10. Number six, Mars trees. This looks like moldy bread almost. What in the hell, what are we looking at here? Is this actually a photo, a real photo from Mars? Are those trees? There's not a chance here. Matt Damon grew potatoes on Mars in the movie The Martian, but I don't think he can grow any pine trees anytime soon. What you're looking at here is still pretty insane. Due to the evaporation of carbon dioxide frost, dark sand is sliding down the frosted side of the dune, so it makes it look like there's trees on the planet Mars. Sun-heated carbon dioxide ice, that's just, I read that and I go, what? What does that even mean? Where do I start with this? We thought we found a giant alien back in 1976 when NASA's Viking 1 flew by and it looked like a face was in the planet. Remember that? It looks like a Jabberwocky, it's just lying getting a suntan. This one here is in an optical illusion. It's just weird space science. Number five, 
smooth moon. When we think of moons in the sky or like how other planets have other moons, we think of them as our own. Just a big ball of cheese in the sky, a big sphere, it's got craters, it's pale, we get it, right? Well, as we've seen so far in this list, some moons can look like the Death Star, and some moons can look like chewed gum, apparently. Saturn's small moon Atlas looks like a UFO. It's not a sphere at all, it literally has the shape of a UFO. How scary is that? NASA's Cassini spacecraft caught this image back in 2017, and it almost looks like two moons have crashed into one another, and then now it has a ring-like edge to it. When new photos came back after discovering this moon way back in 1980, scientists were surprised that this moon is actually really smooth. In 4K, they're like, oh, it's not even the pixels, it's actually really smooth. A smooth moon, you say? <laughs> Let me take a look here. This little smooth moon in the sky, little pervert. Number four, dead galaxies. This one sounds scary, dead galaxies. Guardians of the dead galaxy. New research from NASA, including the Hubble Space Telescope, along with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array in northern Chile, they found six different dead galaxies in total. They're all like, that's one, that's two, and they're like, hey, we found four, all dead, horrifying. How does this happen? Let's look into it. These dead galaxies had run out of the cold hydrogen needed to make stars, and without the fuel for new stars, these galaxies were basically running on nothing at that point. It's kind of like when your car battery battery dies, only this is on a cosmic scale. This discovery led us to new questions we didn't even know we had. Like what led to these galaxies to die anyways? What happened to all the cold gas in them so early on? These six galaxies lived fast and hot lives, but we aren't sure what went wrong quite yet. Lead author and assistant professor of astronomy at the University of Massachusetts, Kate Whitaker, she proposed several potential explanations and gave us insight onto the future of the studies, which she said, did a supermassive black hole in the galaxy center turn on and heat up all the gas? If so, the gas could still be out there, but now it's just cold. We need Thanos to come back and just, you know, start this fire up. Just a big, someone get a big lighter and just go and just light it back up. Alas, new life. Is that Thor? Welcome back. Number three, solar flares. Our lives literally revolve around the sun. It blesses us with life energy, solar rotation, and most importantly, tan lines, obviously. But sometimes she acts up. Sometimes she gets a little cray cray. Sometimes she gets a little and then she spurts out lava and scares us all. Sometimes she creates these powerful magnetic fields that create sunspots larger than our entire planet. Yep, like I said, she's moody. This creates a stream of radiation. It's called solar wind. Now, normally, this is a beautiful event to see. We have many photos of it now. The northern lights happen because of Earth's magnetic field reacting to this specific radiation. Beautiful, but really scary when you think about it. This past October, a large solar flare was spotted, and then three days later, it finally hit Earth. The geomagnetic storm reached category G2, which out of five is pretty strong, especially when you look at it as a, you know, on a planetary scale. The biggest solar event was back in 1859. It's called the Carrington Event. It was strong enough to disrupt telegraph communications, even shocking, literally shocking, some telegraph operators. Like if that happens again, and it's even stronger this time, we're looking at huge power outages on a massive scale. Imagine talking to someone on your iPhone and it blows up. Right in the middle of Avatar 2, boom, blackout. Life as we know it is now meaningless. We're all crying in public. Number two, the space crab. Is the multiverse collapsing? What, what is this? The appropriately named Space Crab Nebula was discovered back in 1054. Yeah, way back then, astronomers looked into the sky and saw this new bright star. They saw it during daytime. That's how they knew something was up. What they were observing at the time was a supernova explosion. How spectacular is that? This was when the Crab Nebula was born. It's not too far away either. It's just a mere, you know, 6,500 light years tucked away in the constellation Taurus. If you're a Taurus, you're watching, you're like, oh, no way. I'm a Libra. I'm like, get out of here. What do you know? The image of the space crab here was captured over the course of three months. NASA put together 24 exposures captured by, of course, our Hubble. The orange glow we see, those are literally star remains, just large pockets of hydrogen. The interesting part here with the space crab is back in 2005, over the course of 10 Hubble exposures from September to November, these waves can be seen expanding outwards, waves coming from the nebula's pulsar. Space is so scary. We have one moon to worry about here. Meanwhile, all of this is going on in our space neighborhood. I'm terrified. And finally, number one, mystery wave. More waves coming in hot, really hot this time around. If you've seen Interstellar, this next one should hit close to home. I'm not a fan of wave pools or waves in general. My stupid head just bobbing around in the ocean, that's, that's peril, that's, 
That's a nightmare situation. I can't swim too well. I don't know, I'm too lanky. I'm like a piece of seaweed floating around. The largest wave ever seen in the entire solar system, of course, I had to save this one for last. On a planet a little closer to the sun, Venus, the pressure in the atmosphere can cause some massive waves. Back in 2015, a Japanese spacecraft zoomed by and caught this phenomena. Usually clouds there will move around 100 meters a second, but these clouds, these massive ripples, stayed in the same place for four days, way above the ground level also. They were just like, huh? and then they got stuck there. Due to a runaway greenhouse effect, temperatures on Venus hit around 460 degrees Celsius. So this wave may have been powerful enough to change the climate for those four days. Pretty crazy. I feel like Canada, we get a lot of weather changes, but this, this is next level. Number 10, Oumuamua asteroid. Despite the advances in lens technology and telescopy, there are things that still take scientists by surprise. Shocking. I know. When the interstellar visitor Oumuamua crossed our solar system in 2017, experts could not complain its origins. Not to mention Oumuamua is the first interstellar object detected passing through the solar system. It was discovered by Robert Work using PanSTARRS telescope at Leakala Observatory, Hawaii on October 19th, 2017, approximately 40 days after it passed its closest point to the sun on September 9th. When it was first observed, it was about 33 million kilometers from Earth. It is a small object estimated to be between 300 and 3,000 feet long, with its width and thickness both estimated between 115 and 148 feet. It has a red color similar to objects in the outer solar system and has a surface similar to comets. The observation suggests that this unusual object had been wandering through the Milky Way, unattached to any star system, for hundreds of millions of years before its chance encounter with our star system. For decades we've theorized such interstellar objects out there and now for the first time we have direct evidence they exist, said Thomas Zerbechen, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington in November 2017. Number 9. A Giant Slug on Pluto Yep, you heard that right. These days NASA continues to receive new data from its New Horizons probe. The data, which includes imagery and measurements collected by the Crafts camera and instruments, continues to provide new and surprising details about Pluto's varied surface. For example, in this photo, it seems like there's a slug on Pluto. Is it a slug though? I'm not too sure. The bizarre image was taken in 2015. The photo covers an area of Pluto that's part of an icy plane, informally as Sputnik Planum. NASA puts the pitted surface into perspective by saying its surface is separated into cells or polygons 10 to 25 miles wide, and when viewed at low sun angles with visible shadows, the cells are seen to have slightly raised centers and rigid margins, with about 100 yards of overall height variation. So Pluto is not the same as Earth, in case any of you were still confused out there. But what is this slug? Is Pluto ruled by slugs? Well, according to IFL Science, this extraterrestrial gastropod is actually a block of ice, which is disappointing. So no slugs, but just ice. Well, that's what they say. Number 8. Faces on Mars As reported by Space, this shocking picture, appropriately named the Face of Mars, was taken by NASA's Viking spacecraft in 1976. Viking 1 spacecraft was circling the planet, snapping photos of possible landing sites for a sister ship, Viking 2, when it spotted the shadowy likeness of a human face. An enormous head nearly two miles from end to end seemed to be staring back at the cameras. While some experts explain this image with the phenomenon phenomenon of seeing faces in objects and patterns, known as pareidolia, many still believe this is evidence of extraterrestrial life. I mean, come on, there's literally faces there. Could it be the faces of people who were buried there? And why are there so many faces? What do they mean? I need answers. In our number 7 spot today, we have the end of the roll. This is a photo that was taken on the Apollo 7 mission, and while it was likely meant to be just a stunning photo, thank goodness it wasn't meant to include or document anything exceptionally important because, uh, well, the photo is greatly obscured by the end of the roll tape. <laughs> this photo is hilarious. It appears to be of Earth, and it looks like the photo would show this beautiful white swirl spanning across the blue planet. A beautiful piece of photography, if it weren't for the rectangle, taking up a third of the image right smack dab in the middle. 
These people are astronauts, not photographers, and despite that, they managed to take some exceptional photos while on their missions, so I think it's fair to cut them some slack for this one. It's not like their thumb was in the way or something like that. In our number 6 spot today, we have the selfie. The word selfie hasn't been around for that long, but people have been taking them for years. With adjustable views and forward facing cameras, it's definitely gotten a lot easier, but that didn't stop Apollo 17's Ron Evans from having his hand at them, while of course, in space. This photo shows about half of Ron, although it's tough to tell with him decked out in his spacesuit. Apparently he snapped this photo while he was retrieving exposed film from outside of the spacecraft. I think that means he was in the midst of a spacewalk when he snapped this selfie. That is perhaps the most badass selfie of all time. On the way back to Earth near the end of the mission, Evans did a 1 hour and 6 minute long spacewalk, so it's entirely possible that this is exactly where this photo is from. I mean, that would explain the absolute nothingness that can be seen behind him. In our number 5 spot today, we have number 2. When we hear about space missions, we often hear of the grueling work and preparations, or perhaps the science and mathematics that went into the planning, or maybe we're just there for the cool photos and interesting discoveries. But whatever it is, we normally don't hear about, either from reports or the astronaut themselves, is how on earth they manage to use the facilities while flying through space and living in zero gravity. Well, thanks to Apollo 17, some of the mysteries surrounding it were unveiled, although this photo didn't exactly go viral. The final, for now, mission to the moon had those on board snapping shots of the plastic bags that were filled with their space pee. Also, note the device used to help collect it that is located at the top of the bag. Yeah, that little thing was actually cited as the reason women couldn't serve in the Apollo space program. You're telling me that NASA could figure out how to send people to the moon, but it was too difficult at the time to figure out the female anatomy and how a woman could pee in space? Okay, it's a little suspicious at best. In our number 4 spot today we have the Mars eclipse. So this is more of a video rather than one single image. Well, actually it's a series of 89 different images that, when strung together, act like a video, but I digress. It was all captured by NASA's Curiosity rover as it showed us insights into what life is like on Mars. So on Earth, we have this weird coincidence that the distance ratio between the Earth and the Moon versus the Earth and the Sun is almost the same as the size ratio between the Moon and the Sun. This is why, when the Moon passes in front of the Sun for a total eclipse, it covers it completely. On other planets, namely Mars, that's not what happens. When one of the moons of Mars passes in front of the Sun, it's much smaller and it appears like this. Curiosity was able to observe a ton of these instances, which are called trans it's from two moons, Phobos and Deimos. It's just really strange to see how things that the average person wouldn't have necessarily thought about are so completely different on other planets. Of course it makes sense and it's perfectly logical, it's just strange to see it right in front of your eyes and really take a second to think about it. In our number 3 spot today we have the series. This is a series of photographs that were taken on the Apollo 17 mission. The first in the series is another photo that has gone down in history as one of the most iconic. A photo of our beautiful planet as seen from space. I mean, come on, how stunning. We are so lucky to have this as our home. The next photo followed up the last iconic one, and while still interesting, it definitely leaves a little something to be desired. It's a simple photo of a floating engine stage. Still cool, just not as cool as the Earth one. The next photo, however, is when things go a little awry. It appears as though the next photo is someone's failed attempt at photographing the sun. It's so funny. It's just white. No one can see a thing. It's exactly what anyone would do and I love it. The final photo in the series has whoever took the photos returning back to snap some shots of Earth. I guess they likely didn't realize that the one they already had was better than anyone could have imagined. In our number 2 spot today we have Mimis. This is a photo that my brain can't even begin to comprehend as real. It's a photo of one of Saturn's moons called Mimis. This moon just so happens to have a 130 kilometer wide crater on it that is called Herschel. This is cool and interesting and makes this moon look absolutely fascinating, but this photo caught by the Cassini spacecraft in 2005 really brings it to a whole new level. As the sun lit up the Herschel crater, the spacecraft caught this image where we 
can actually see the rings of Saturn in the background. Firstly, Saturn has at least 83 moons, so snapping such a gorgeous picture of one isolated one probably isn't the easiest thing in the world, especially for a spacecraft. Secondly, some of the moons are huge. Like the biggest of them all, Titan is bigger than the planet Mercury. It's less massive, and I know Mercury isn't a huge planet, but still, that's pretty huge for a moon, but I guess that isn't surprising considering the size of Saturn. The rings of Saturn are mostly comprised of ice particles with smaller amounts of rocky debris and dust, and it's exceptionally interesting to see how they look, even when you're up close. This photo probably isn't that bizarre, but it certainly is spectacular. And yes, you're not alone if you're sitting there thinking that this moon looks a heck of a lot like a Death Star. In our number one spot today, we have Alone. No, this isn't a photo from space thriller Gravity, which stars Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, but if you haven't seen it, it's a great movie and I would highly recommend it. Not necessarily the most scientifically accurate movie, but definitely anxiety inducing. Anyway, back to the photo. This is actually a photo of NASA astronaut Bruce McCandless in 1984. I have no idea how I hadn't seen this photo ever before, as it clearly shows Bruce just roaming free from the space shuttle Challenger. No, obviously it wasn't the one that exploded. I had the same thought. They're different. I looked it up. He was able to do this thanks to a nitrogen powered jetpack, which was called the Manned Maneuvering Unit, and it actually led to him being the first person to ever do a spacewalk untethered. Quite possibly the coolest and one of the most brave things ever. Like, I'd want to do it so bad, but would I risk the possibility of endlessly floating till I met a horrific death once my supplies ran out? Probably not. Bruce had some interesting things to say about the experience, however, saying, quote, I was grossly overtrained. I was just anxious to get out there and fly. I felt very comfortable. It got so cold my teeth were chattering and I was shivering, but that was a very minor thing. I'd been told of the quiet vacuum you experience in space, but with three radio links saying, how's your oxygen holding out, stay away from the engines, and when's my turn, it wasn't that peaceful. It was a wonderful feeling, a mix of personal elation and professional pride. It had taken many years to get to that point. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the after photo. Many of us have seen the portrait of Edwin Buzz Aldrin on the moon. It's an iconic image and has gone on to become one of the most inspiring images of all time, but what we don't see is the one that came immediately after. Maybe it's an arm, maybe it's a chest or a belly, either way it belongs to the taker of the photo, Neil Armstrong. Even the first people on the moon take accidental photos. I mean, it can't be easy in all of that gear. I can't even make a phone call with gloves on. I can't even imagine being in space trying to snap a selfie while making history. It's nice to see the clean, polished, inspiring part of history, but it's also nice to sometimes remind ourselves that we are all just humans, and humans are silly. In our number 9 spot today, we have the Crescent Earth. Less bizarre and more downright artistic and beautiful, truly the only thing that makes this photo bizarre is its lack of popularity, as well as the point of view and how opposite of our own it is. At a first glance, it looks like a photo of the night sky, as seen from a sort of piece of space technology, and it looks like the photo captures a sweet crescent moon. While this makes a lot of sense, what we're actually seeing is the Earth as it rises and looms over the Apollo 14 lander. That crescent is Earth. We look like that from the moon. It completely makes sense, it's just something I had failed to think about before. If you were to camp out on the far side of the moon, because the moon and earth are tidally locked, you wouldn't be able to see earth. But on the near side of the moon, you'd see the earth all the time, and through the course of about a month, the earth would also go through phases just like the moon does, but they'd be the direct opposite of the phases people on earth would be witnessing the moon going through. If that made any sense at all. I can't believe I had never seen this photo before because it truly is stunning. In our number eight spot today, we have the moon. This image shows a series of three photographs that are just a few of the hundreds taken by the Apollo astronauts. While there are many interesting photos that were taken by those on the Apollo missions, the vast majority of them are just of the moon as seen from their window. Don't get me wrong, seeing photos of the moon up close and personal is magnificent. It's very cool and it's stunning to look at, but once you see it a few dozen times in photos, perhaps the novelty wears off a bit. Of course, the same can't be said for seeing it actually in real life out of the window next to you though. 
Until travel to the moon becomes a regular old everyday thing like it's a commute to work, that novelty won't ever wear off, as evidenced by the extremely extensive catalog of close up moon photos taken by the crew. It honestly is kind of nice to see though. To me, astronauts seem so cool and serious and intelligent. And while all of those things likely are very true, they're also giddy, excited humans who were clearly thrilled to be where they were. It's just humanizing. That's all I'm saying. Coming in at number seven, did NASA capture an alien moon base? And also, did they accidentally release pictures of it? Hmm. According to some conspiracists, then yeah, they did. Have a look at these and tell me what you think. Is this alien evidence? Conspiracists YouTube channel Secure Team 10 claim that these images were proof of an alien base on the moon. The YouTube channel has 1.7 million subscribers, so a lot of people are watching their content. Their channel is filled with moon conspiracies, and they think that these images are a smoking gun for NASA. UFOlogist and hoax. Buster Scott Brando said that the images used by Secure Team 10 were low quality and low resolution. He seemed to think that the images are just an optical illusion. Who knows though? Another classic from the Daily Express we have alien astronauts caught on camera at number six. Some think that Mars rover Curiosity captured aliens, others think that it's a widespread conspiracy that humans are already on Mars. The first manned Mars mission is set to begin within the next 10 years, but some are saying that the photos taken by Curiosity and published by NASA already show that there are humans on the red planet. Some people think that these shadow images show astronauts working on the rover to repair it. Others say that the droids show humanoid looking aliens. Now the conspiracists say that NASA didn't realise how much they were showing when the images were released into the public domain. So is it aliens or are humans already up on Mars? If so, why would that be hidden from us? Or do these pictures have a more logical explanation? You UFO conspiracist good old Scott C. Waring said that this just goes to show the public that the rover is being maintained by humans on Mars and that there are other spacecraft kept secret from the public that can carry peers to Mars in just a few minutes. You know what Scott, I don't know about that one. Okay, these death eaters living out there in space terrify me at number 5. The Harry Potter fans in this video will probably be just as freaked out by this as I am. I don't like them. Get a load of what is lurking in the mist of the Carina Nebula. To me, these are straight up death eaters waiting to suck out my soul. But actually, they're supposed to be knots of dark molecular gas. Knots of dark molecular gas waiting to suck out my soul, right? These clouds of gas surround the Great Nebula in Carina, which used to be one of the brightest stars in the sky in the 1800s, but now it's significantly faded. This maybe lends credence to my whole sucking theory, right? Okay, fine, they probably aren't Death Eaters, but still, they're spooky. This picture freaks me out. Coming into number four, we have the Hand of God. NASA released this x ray image of light detected by NASA's Chanda X ray Observatory in 2014. Can you see why they called it the Hand of God? Because it kind of looks like. You know. So this is actually a pulsar wind nebula, a stellar corpse that spins rapidly, firing a particle wind. NASA themselves are mystified by the shape. Alongside the image on their website, they wrote, One of the big mysteries of this object is whether the pulsar particles are interacting with the material in a specific way to make it look like a hand, or if the material is in fact shaped like a hand. Now, A lot of people do genuinely believe that this is God's mark in the universe, like the eye that cropped up earlier. Now I'm not too convinced, but. I'd love to know what you think. Ah, we have a famous Mars picture that caused a stir at number three. We have Bigfoot on Mars. Mars's now defunct robot rover Spirit captured this image in late 2007. Who this? A Rudy Nudie alien lady or Bigfoot? Either way, aliens, right? This image boosted the life on Mars discussion, with many conspiracists saying that this image was proof. NASA explained the image is simply the paradelia phenomena. This is where humans see faces when they aren't there. Analyzing Spirit's image, if this was an alien, it'd be pretty small, according to Phil Platt of Bad Astronomy website. Anyway, NASA says it's nothing more than a Martian rock, although NASA would say that, wouldn't they? Probably because it is just a rock, right? Coming into number two, we have this screaming skull. It's pretty terrifying. This screaming skull was another of NASA's Halloween releases, this time from the year 2000. The haunting image was taken from the orbiting Chandra Observatory and is one of a cluster of galaxies known as Perseus. You can see Perseus right here in X ray vision. The Perseus cluster contains thousands upon thousands of galaxies, so we can't really truly comprehend this picture. It's just 
much more than a spooky picture than what looks like a skull, it's a lot going on there. While the image is already pretty spooky, it gets scarier when you realise that the bright spot in the x-ray is a black hole. Not to worry though, this scary skull cluster is 320 million light years away. Finally at number 1, we have a truly iconic and somewhat infamous picture, the Viking 1 faces on Mars. This is one of the most famous NASA images out there and has been used as absolute fuel to conspiracy theorists fire over the past 40 years, that was since the picture was taken in July 1976. The snap was taken by NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft and seemed to show the shadowy likeness of a human face, only this face is 2 miles long. Taken in the Cydonia region of Mars, the image was sent back to mission controllers at the Jet Propulsion Lab. At the time, theorists went wild saying that it was evidence of an ancient civilization on Mars. Now the image did quite look like an Egyptian pharaoh after all. NASA explained that the image was just a Martian messer with the sunlight playing tricks. NASA later went back with the Mars Orbiter camera, but people simply explained the lack of face that time by saying that it was a cloudy day and the alien detail couldn't be seen. I don't know, I'm thinking it probably was just a trick of the light. Number 10. The Venus Wave Spotted by the Akatsuki spacecraft in 2015, a massive wave was observed travelling across the surface of Venus. Stretching for 10,000 kilometers, the wave continued up until Venus's cloud tops, where it suddenly became stationary. It is uh, good to note that the average travelling speed of clouds in Venus upper atmosphere roughly caps out at about 100 meters per second. The source of the wave is undetermined, with theories being tossed around that it might have been caused by a rogue gravity wave, which itself would have been caused by the displacement of a fluid from its preferred position. Uh, as Venus is an extremely volatile planet, and no research craft has survived for longer than a couple of minutes on its surface, these claims are difficult to prove, and the secrets of this blue dot remain hidden beneath its swirling clouds. Number 9. Oumuamua On October 19th, 2017, an object was sighted from the University of Hawaii. Classified as a comet, the object is thin and flat, or roughly a quarter of a mile long. But more importantly, it was picking up speed. If you don't remember middle school science, an object in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an object of similar or equal mass. In space, because there is nothing to act upon the object to slow it down, any velocity will be kept until impact. But an increase in velocity doesn't make sense without propellant. So what was moving Oumuamua? Well, the theory goes that it might contain a chunk of solid hydrogen, which was slowly falling off of the object's surface and allowing for an increase in speed. However, studying the comet is completely impossible, as it's the first observed object to fly into our system and then fly back out. So this theory is just kind of unconfirmed, and we may never know where the traveler came from, nor where it did go. Number 8. PSO J3 18.5-22 Discovered yet again by our friends at the University of Hawaii, PSO J318.5-22 is a rogue planet, floating through space without a star for it to orbit. It's estimated to be roughly the size of Jupiter, but as to where it came from, no one has a clue. Theories about some hoping that it may have been kicked away from its home star due to a gravitational anomaly, but who can say? None but the rogue planet, no. Number 7. Dark Matter Dark Matter is a hypothetical form of matter thought to account for approximately 85% of the matter in the universe. Dark Matter is called dark because it does not appear to interact with the electromagnetic field, which means it does not absorb, reflect, or emit electromagnetic radiation, and is therefore difficult to detect. We're more certain of what dark matter isn't rather than what it is. It's not made of black holes, the light warping they'd cause isn't present. NASA telescopes have helped us better understand this mysterious invisible matter that is five times the mass of regular matter. The first direct detection of dark matter was made in 2007 through observations of the bullet cluster of galaxies 
by the Shonda X-ray telescope, and we continue to learn more every day. Number six, black holes. A black hole is a region of space-time where gravity is so strong that nothing, including light or other electromagnetic waves, have enough energy to escape its event horizon. Although we can't see black holes, scientists have been able to study them by observing how they interact with the environment around them with telescopes like Swift, Chandra, and Hubble. In 2017, NASA's Swift telescope mapped the death spiral of a star as it is consumed by a black hole. Later, astronomers used Chandra to have discovered evidence for thousands of black holes located near the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which scares me. Number 5, Kepler 186f. Kepler 186f is the first rocky exoplanet to be found within the habitable zone as the region around the host star has the temperature that is right for liquid water. The planet is also very close in size to Earth. While planets have previously been found in the habitable zone, they are at least 40% larger in size than Earth, and understanding their makeup is challenging. Kepler 186f is more reminiscent of Earth. Although the size of Kepler 186f is unknown, its mass and composition are not. Previous research, however, suggests that a planet the size of Kepler 186f is likely to be rocky. Even though we may not find out what's going on on the surface of this planet anytime soon, it's a strong reminder of why new technologies are being developed that will enable scientists get a closer look at distant worlds, but we still have a lot to learn. Number 4, Tabby Star. Tabby Star is an F type main sequence star in the constellation Cygnus, approximately 1,470 light years away from Earth. Tabby Star is one of the most exciting NASA discoveries. According to Science Alert, Tabby Star is a yellow white dwarf star with random dimming. Some believe that Tabby Star is a plumet or a moon that has escaped its planet. Unusual light fluctuations of the star, including up to 22% dimming in brightness, were discovered by citizen scientists as part of the Planet Hunters project. In September 2015, astronomers and citizen scientists associated with the project posted a preprint of an article describing the data and multiple interpretations. The discovery was made from data collected from the Kepler Space Telescope, which observed changes in the brightness of distant stars to detect exoplanets. Number 3, The Great Void. The Giant Void is an extremely large region of space with an under density of galaxies and located in the constellation Canis Venetisi. It is the second largest confirmed void to date with an estimated diameter to 1.3 billion light years and its center is approximately 1.5 billion light years away. It was discovered in 1988 and was the largest void in the northern galactic hemisphere and possibly the second largest ever detected. Unlike a black hole, the giant void isn't a hole in space, instead it's curiously empty of both matter and dark matter. And also different from a black hole, light can pass through the void, though scientists believe it contains dark energy. Number 2, Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is a persistent high pressure region in the atmosphere of Jupiter, producing an anticyclonic storm that's the largest in the solar system. Located 22 degrees south of Jupiter's equator, it produces wind speeds up to 2 268 miles per hour. Observations from 1665 to 1713 are believed to be of the same storm, and if that is correct, it has existed for at least 358 years. It was next observed in September 1831, when it was four times bigger with 60 recorded observations between then and 1878, when continuous observations began. According to Business Insider, the reason why this high curious pressure spot is disappearing is still unclear. Amy Simon, an expert in planetary atmospheres at NASA's Godred Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland, said learning more about Jupiter and its great red spot could help scientists understand Earth's weather system better. Jupiter's weather functions under the same physics as Earth, she said, just millions of miles farther from the sun. Amy also said Jupiter studies could improve our understanding of worlds beyond our solar system. If you just look at reflected light from an extrasolar planet, you're not going to be able to tell what it's made of, she said. Looking at as many possible different cases in our own solar system could enable us to then apply that knowledge to extrasolar planets. Studies predict Jupiter's upper atmosphere has clouds consisting of ammonia, ammonium hydrosulfide, and water. Still, scientists don't know exactly how or even whether these chemicals react to give colors like those in the Great Red Spot. And coming in at number one are gamma ray bursts. Gamma ray bursts are another mysterious space phenomenon that NASA cannot fully understand. As reported by 
Earth's sky, gamma ray bursts originate in the beam of radiation during stellar explosions such as supernova or hypernova. On Sunday, October 9th, 2022, a pulse of intense radiation swept through the solar system so exceptional that astronomers quickly called it the brightest of all time. The burst triggered detectors on numerous spacecrafts and observatories around the globe followed up. After combing through all of this data, astronomers can now characterize just how bright it was and better understand its scientific impact. GRB 221009A was likely the brightest burst at X-ray and gamma ray energies to occur since human civilization began, said Eric Burns, an assistant professor of physics and astronomy at Louisiana State University in Baton Rouge. The burst was so bright it effectively blinded most gamma ray instruments in space, which means they could not directly record the real intensity of the emission. US scientists were able to reconstruct this information from its Fermi data. The signal from GRB 221009A had been traveling for about 1.9 billion years before it reached Earth, making it among the closest known long GRBs whose initial or prompt emission lasts more than two seconds. Astronomers think these bursts represent the birth cries of black holes formed when the cores of massive stars collapse under their own weight. Well, that's all for our list of the top 10 terrifying photos from other planets NASA can't even explain. Kicking off the list at number 10, the largest known comet. Comet Bernadelli Bernstein. What a name right there. Okay, what a find as well, may I add. June 23rd, 2021, so pretty recently, Pedro Bernardinelli was a grad student and researcher. He was originally observing outer solar system objects like trans-Neptunian objects, stuff like that, but thanks to dark matter, he ended up finding this mega comet instead, which is pretty sweet. He's like, sure, I'll take it, let's look into it. So he went to his advisor, a cosmologist named Gary Bernstein, and he told them to look into it. Like, to literally look into it. 10 times wider than a typical comet, this thing is huge. Last time it was near our sun was a good 3 million years ago, and now it's back. Well, in 10 years, it'll be close. So get your wishes ready. All you have to do is say the comet's name three times fast, and you're set. Good luck. Bernard Nelly Bernstein, Bernard Nelly Bernstein, Bernard Nelly Bernstein. Yes. That's a hard name to say. I was Googling it, and I'm like, oh, man, I love your names. Great observation and all, but... <sighs> Actually, no, that's great. That's a pretty sick name. I would name a comet my last name. McWaters? Easy. Number nine, the unicorn. Not to be confused with Unicron, although both are equally scary, I'd say. The unicorn is the closest black hole to Earth. But don't panic, it's not gonna, you know, turn us into spaghetti anytime soon, so we're good. The unicorn gallops 1,500 light years away from Earth. It's far away, and it's also pretty small. It's a tiny black hole, so it's extremely hard to find. That's why telescopes like James Webb will come in handy, so we can identify more of these little guys. Researchers were able to find the unicorn because a near star, a red giant for that matter, had its light shifting towards something. It's always special when you see sunlight just doing this, Ooh, just melting towards something. You're like, okay, let's take a look. So they named it the unicorn because it's also tucked away in the unicorn constellation, Monoceros. The fact that it's rare also inspired the name. So yeah, it's a win-win. They're like, unicorn? Wait, can we do this? This is perfect. Also, please don't turn us into spaghetti. Thank you so much, stay away. Number eight, a new star. Our sun is around 4.5 billion years old. Not that there's anything wrong with that, you know, she's still young at heart, but this new star over here, whew, she's hot. This protostar, during its crazy cosmic birth, jets of gas are now whipping through space at impossible speeds, and it's beautiful. Now we get to look at it and go, wow. Thumbs up. When this material collides with the matter of the still forming star, what's created is called a Herbig Barrow object. Hubble captured it and it is glorious. We're gonna get even more beautiful shots once James Webb warms up later on this year. So this is really, you know, it's kind of like nothing. Just wait. Number seven, the diamond planet. Discovered in 2004, Janssen is an exoplanet close to the star Cancri A. Years later, the planet was determined to be a carbon planet, a theoretical type of planet with more carbon than oxygen. As a result of this, it is theorized, due to the method of which diamonds are created, that within Janssen could lie an absolute abundance of diamonds. However, getting to it would be difficult. See, Jan Janssen's proximity to the sun is so small that average temperatures are estimated to be around eh, 17,000 degrees Celsius. So good luck getting close enough to snag some stones. Honestly, the scariest thing to me is that someone might actually try this for reasons that I doubt even the greatest minds could truly comprehend beyond, I guess, 
Greed. Number 6. The Vampire Star Halloween's over, but the true horror fans know that it lasts all year long. Not just limited to our solar system, the existence of Hammer Horror classic monsters has clearly reached the stars, specifically symbiotic stars. See, when two stars are formed in proximity to one another, their mass will draw in the hydrogen from the other star, which will deplete its life, turning it into a white dwarf. From there, the white dwarf will go supernova, annihilating both in the process. What scientists have difficulty explaining is how such celestial entities exist, and worst of all, how some have have survived the supernova. It's hypothesized that Betelgeuse, the star, not the ghost, is what's called a cannibal star. And before we observed it, Betelgeuse must have sucked the life out of another star. So why can we still see Betelgeuse today, despite the fact that the other star would have gone Novo? Wait, did I say it three times? Number five, the huge LQG. Quasars are extremely supermassive black holes that are surrounded by accretion disks, which then release their generation of a beam as pure radiation. We'll get into that later. Cool and slightly terrifying, right? Well, the huge LQG is made up of a cluster of 74 quasars. 74. Originally believed to be impossible, this massive cluster of black holes and radiation defies both science and sense just by its existence. The huge LQG has a rough span of 4 billion light years, easily the largest structure in the universe, and by far larger than our own. Number four, the Boots Void. Do you know what's more terrifying than something? Nothing. And the Boots Void is just that. Nothing. A region of space where there is simply nothing. And to be clear, this isn't Barnard 68, the dark nebula that eats light. No, no, no. This is just nothing. Several galaxies do surround it, but none exist within its center. There's nothing within the void. There may never have been, and there maybe never will be. Or maybe there's just something keeping everything else out. Number three, the incoming mega comet. Did you know that every year 17,000 meteorites fall to Earth? Now, most of these just burn up in the atmosphere, usually long before they're visible. Uh, the ones that can be seen are the ones that are actually dubbed meteors. But what if a meteor couldn't burn up in the atmosphere? Spotted by the Hubble telescope, the comet Bernard Dinelli Bernstein is currently flying right towards us at around 72,000 miles per hour. 60 miles across, the meteor is roughly half the theorized size of the asteroid response for ending the age of the dinosaurs. But nevertheless, this cosmic catastrophe could cause considerable consternation were it to collide with our rock. So, when does it get here? Well, don't bother looking up because it, it isn't gonna come within like a billion miles of us. Even so, if it changes course even slightly, we could be looking at a pretty dark future. Number two, gamma ray bursts. There's a distinct beauty to black holes. They're swirling light collapsing into a mass so dense as to erase light itself. Their byproducts are gamma ray bursts. These streams of light that fire out of what would be visualized as the top and bottom of the black hole. It sort of looks like a gyroscope, only one that, you know, defies physics and erases matter. Well, as it turns out, even the most beautiful parts of this flower can be its deadliest, as gamma ray bursts are explosions of high intensity radiation that could cook anything in its way in a matter of seconds. So it's a good thing that, you know, stars aren't dying out regularly, and even better that our planet has never been hit by a gamma ray burst before. Oh wait, it actually totally was. Well, the effects wouldn't exactly be, you know, Death Star adjacent if Close enough, the radiation would absolutely be lethal. And close in terms of spatial proximity could be anywhere, honestly. Comforting thought. Number one, the CMB cold spot. The CMB cold spot was discovered by the Wilkinson Microwave Anisotropy Probe, a device primarily constructed to measure cosmic background radiation and test the theory of the Big Bang. The cold spot was added to a structure that is titled, I'm not joking, the Axis of Evil, a name given to any anomaly that deviates from the Copernican principle. Far larger than the boot's void, temperatures within the cold spot are around 0.00007 Kelvin. The average in space, of course, is about 2.7 Kelvin. What caused the creation of the cold spot is unknown, but physicist Laura Mersini Houghton claimed that it could be an imprint from a parallel universe. Kicking off the list at number 10, the Pluto slug. 
Back in January 2016, the New Horizons probe was sending tons of new information back from our little ex-planet, Pluto. The icy plane shows a series of lines, almost like these giant space slugs, dare I say, are slowly moving across the surface of the planet. Check it out. It reminds me of the episode of SpongeBob, where the gang, you know, rides a rock across the ocean floor. Maybe Patrick and SpongeBob are delivering a pizza on Pluto, okay? They could be just in the weeds, they could be busy. This icy area of the dwarf planet is called the Sputnik Planum. Scientists believe so far the reason for all these lines is that the planet is breathing in a way. If that sounds creepy, it's because it kind of is. The planet's cooling and heating and it's kind of moving around, but we'll leave some room open for space slugs because you know what, at this day and age, you never know. I've seen enough Avenger movies, I'm like, mm, could be space worms. Number nine, Mima's moon. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Just kidding, this one's actually really close. It's Saturn, it's right right there. Saturn is known for having a plethora of moons. Saturn in total has 82 moons, including this one, Mimas. A moon that looks oddly familiar. Why do I feel like it's gonna just blast us all the smithereens? Why do I feel like that's gonna happen? Is that the Death Star? Is this thing pointing at Earth? Which way is it pointing here? That's That really matters. Saturn's smallest innermost moon is causing quite the stir here on Earth. About a month ago, researchers discovered that this moon has a bit of a wobble to it, almost like a floating magic eight ball. Something is sloshing around inside. Its gravitational pull is a little off. It's kind of... It's just grooving around in the solar system, you know? Mima could potentially be housing a liquid ocean. Yep, we got more water in space. It's pretty close, too. If that was the case, everything we know about water and ocean life in space would have to be rewritten. Number eight, black hole helix. Imagine looking, peering through a telescope, and then you see this. I would throw up right into my telescope. This is a galactic jet. It shot out of a black hole at the center of the M87 galaxy. It's pretty scary looking. This helix shot out a whopping 8,000 light years. Yeah, it's pretty far. That's so far I can't even fathom how far that is. You know, like my brain won't allow me to really picture that. This sounds like a threat, really, but I'll remind you that the M87 galaxy is 55 million light years away from us, so we're not gonna get any galactic jet on our hands anytime soon, know what I mean? But just how does something like this happen? Astronomers in New Mexico discover that this massive jet is caused by a corkscrew-shaped magnetic field. What in the witchcraft? Like what? Like a space undertow made out of gravity. That doesn't sound jarring at all. According to the National Radio Astronomy Observatory, this is the longest magnetic fields ever found in a galactic jet. Which is fine, that's the first time I've heard of that. I'm like, that's, you can take that rain, enjoy it. That's, we're not gonna try and beat you. It's stuff like this where I ask myself why I'm worrying about a phone bill. Humans are so tiny compared to this. It's insane, we don't matter. Hey, n uh, number eight, we don't matter. Hit that thumbs up. Number seven, the Veil Nebula. While most subjects on this list are far away from us, the Veil Nebula you can see with a common pair of binoculars on clear conditions. Today we're going with NASA's Hubble telescope view. They got a pretty good look at this gas giant. What you see here is five different layers of ionized gases. This cloud is floating around 2,100 light years away. In order to get a photo of the entire nebula, it would be, well, near impossible. See, the Veil Nebula spans 130 light years wide, which is around 100 times larger than our own solar system. So yeah, binoculars ought to do it. You'll see it somewhere, it's pretty big. Number six, total eclipse. This total eclipse was not of the heart, but it did occur back in December 2021. Not long ago at all. If you didn't see a total eclipse a few months ago, don't worry, we all missed out. I mean, unless you live in Antarctica, we all missed out on this one. This was hard to catch. For a halfway point, I figured I'd throw in a relatable, nice, yet still haunting feature. This deep space climate observatory satellite snapped a pic, and honestly, it looks like the poster of Independence Day. This is real and very scary. This massive shadow of the moon just slowly moving across the land, like the Goosebumps intro, God, it's haunting to look at. Dark spot on the move, like something out of Star Wars almost. The next total eclipse will occur April 8th, 2024. This time it'll be in Canada, US, and Mexico. All those places will go dark, so get your flashlights ready. I'm already nervous. Number five, M64. M64, AKA the Evil Eye Galaxy, AKA the Sleeping Beauty Galaxy, which is a lot nicer. I think we should call it that from now on, definitely. This one might be the coolest space photos of all time. This looks like an artist made it with CGI. I feel like this is concept art from Interstellar. Oh my gosh. What makes the M64 galaxy so impressive to look at and worthy enough to throw on this terrifying list is the way that it moves. Ooh, the way it moves is just so... Mm. Gas on the inner galaxy rotates in one direction and the outer layer spins the, well, you guessed it, opposite way. This is odd behavior for a galaxy. Scientists theorize that the Evil Eye Galaxy, sorry, <clears throat> Sleeping Beauty Galaxy, is the result of two galaxies crashing 
into one another. The fascinating thing really is we're looking at something 17 million light years away. So this image of the evil eye galaxy, Sleeping Beauty, is actually from a long time ago, most likely. Mind bending, right? Space is pretty mind bending. Also terrifying. That's why the James Webb is such a big deal. We're gonna see very far into our past, theoretically. No one really knows what's gonna happen. He's just gonna look and, oh, dinosaurs. Number four, gamma bursts. Somebody give Bruce Banner a heads up because we got a lot of gamma. We have so much gamma. When we look at extinction level events, like say, I don't know, a meteor smashing into the planet, we can bounce back from that, humans, evidently. I mean, look at us, we're doing lists now. We're like, hey, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. I mean, sure, we lost some dinosaurs along the way, but millions of years later, we're here, we're popping. But when it comes to gamma rays hitting the planet, yeah, we're not so lucky at that point. We can't bounce back from that one. If a gamma ray happened any time in our past, be it millions of years ago, we still wouldn't be here. Gamma rays happen when stars explode in distant galaxies. See, light and energy then shoots out along with gamma rays, radio waves, neutrinos, just a cosmic cosmo, all that good space stuff, just shook up and then blasted at you. But then these gamma rays would travel light years through space and if they were to hit Earth, our ozone layer would be toast, just gone forever, just like that. We would be engulfed in chemical smog forever. No bouncing back from that at any point. Or if we did bounce back from it, we'd be lizards or something, you know? We'd be lizard people. Walking around, a bunch of licky dudes, just breathing on people. <laughs> That'd be okay. Number three, supernova. For this next one, we'll be looking at Beetlejuice. And no, I don't mean Michael Keaton, although he's pretty scary. I don't wanna say it three times. I'm keeping count just to be safe. I'm talking about the red giant located in the Orion constellation. It began to dim back in 2019, which is not a great sign. Its decay would be quite noticeable here on Earth. For example, the last time a star went supernova and we were able to observe it, the last time was 1604, and that was the Kepler star. It was beautiful and bright for weeks. Even during the day, we could still see it. All day long, people are like, that's gotta be pretty annoying, huh? Can't wait for that one. But when Betelgeuse finally dims out of existence, you have to wonder if we're far enough to be safe. Which sunscreen is good for solar flares? You know what I'm talking about? Like I freckle up as is. I'm screwed if this happens. Scientists agree that we need to be much closer for the radiation to actually cause harm, but scientists also tell us quite often about these wandering stars and how black holes will just appear out of nowhere. So who really knows? Beetlejuice. Number two, the sun. While it's not recommended we stare at it, the sun is pretty beautiful. Living in Canada, we're just now seeing it maybe a little bit, just a tad, fingers crossed. No, not really at all, I guess. It's a terrible idea to look at the sun, especially through a telescope, so we don't recommend that at all. Thankfully, we have photographer Andrew McCarthy to help out. Andrew layered together 150,000 different photos of the sun to create this 300 megapixel image for us to safely look at. I opened this photo on my phone and my phone literally got hot. I was like, wow, this is a great photo. I can actually feel it, it's so nice. Next time you're outside and it's hot, just remember that this <laughs> scary thing is floating above you. Think of that next time you're getting your tan lines. In order to not go blind or, you know, light any fires in his home, Andrew required a special telescope with numerous filters. So if you're thinking of pointing your phone or telescope at the sun today, just, just don't do that. It's like the magnifying glass trick with the sun. Yeah, just fires one on one. It's all bad, don't even try. And finally, number one, James Webb. Oh, our boy James Webb. What's he doing? What's he up to right now? Let's always check out on him. I told you I'd be back with more. While we patiently wait for James Webb to look deeper into our cosmos, I figured I'd leave you on a fun one. Also kind of scary though. Both the James Webb Space Telescope and the European Space Agency's Gaia spacecraft both orbit the Earth and the Sun's Lagrange Point 2. So they both drift in between the two space giants and on February 18th, a month ago, literally, like this was so recent, Gaia actually managed to get an image of James Webb. Just hanging out. Now look, I thought deep sea photos were hard to look at and like scary. This is another level, this is scary, check it out. Around 930,000 miles away, James Webb just sits there and floats. And he waits to take photos of life and just anything. He's just a little photographer, just floating out there. Very little reflected sunlight came Gaia's way and Webb therefore appears as a tiny faint speck of light in Gaia's two telescopes without any details visible. That's the official statement on finding James Webb. They're like, well, it was right there, we saw it, it was just little. This spacecraft also isn't meant to be a telescope, in case you're wondering. It has a sky mapper on board, but the Gaia is originally meant to track celestial objects, positions, and distances, all that, you know, technical jargon. Imagine James Webb taking a photo back. It would be so HD. It's like 8K, he's like, turn around, what? If you like this video, then check out our video about secret photos that were found at the Pentagon that might reveal alien life. What is the government hiding from us? Find out now by clicking on the video.